Is it an epic or epic failure? The Big Review. Movies, games, and TV in focus. Oh, 95. You know, it's been a couple of years since I've really played any of the latest Assassin's Creed. I stopped around Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is actually probably the last time uh, Ubisoft stick to that old style of the assassination gameplay and introduce the uh, the new kind, which was uh, started off with Assassin's Creed Origin, yeah. followed with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and now Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So this is really the first time I've I've played an Assassin's Creed game that uh, was all about open world, but also RPG elements. And I gotta say, it, it took a while to it just took a while getting used to that. But is it as good as I remembered? That is something we're gonna be reviewing, uh, just talking about and reviewing for the game. But I want Aisha to start off first, because uh, <laughs> you know she's been playing, she's been kept keeping up with the previous Assassin's Creed game, so she can she has a more familiar knowledge of and just something to compare with. And uh, yeah, Aisha, go right ahead. So first off, I have to admit that Odyssey was my first Assassin's Creed game, not the first one I bought. I did buy a couple for the PlayStation 3. I just never played them. I just started collecting dust. And then obviously I moved on to the newer consoles and just completely forgot about them. So Odyssey was my first formal introduction into the series. So I did not experience the original versions of Assassin's Creed or the original gameplay. So when I compare Odyssey and Valhalla from the gameplay aspect, I find them quite similar. At some point, I did tell you that in terms of innovation, in terms of what I'm experiencing, it feels somewhat of an extension of Odyssey. I don't see much differences in that aspect. Yeah. One of the biggest disappointments, after two disappointments, one you already know, I'll get to it in a bit, but the first one is that graphics-wise, again, we're playing it on the PlayStation 4, but we are realizing, both of us agree, Mikhail and I, is that the game is very much optimized for the PlayStation 5, because yeah. when I'm playing it on the PlayStation 4, the graphics are abysmal. They look a bit degraded. They're very, they're abysmal. I'm going to actually say it. They're actually disappointing. And I look at them, that's not what I expect out of a game that is being prepared for as a, somewhat of a farewell, as in it's the last Ubisoft Assassin's Creed game for this generation of consoles. You're telling me this is your farewell to this generation? It's going to be like this? At some point, you'd see them moving their mouths, but then their teeth are closed. I'm like, that sounds, this looks something like a rookie mistake. I would not expect this out of Ubisoft. Yeah. And maybe expect it. Actually, no, even indie developers are fantastic in what they do and whatnot. They know what they're doing, and I think to expect that Ubisoft would also know what they're doing. But I was super disappointed with that. Also notice similarities between characters. There are some characters, especially Rand V, who is the wife of Sigurd. I look at her and I'm like, I have seen you in Odyssey. I swear to God, I've seen you before. Even though I haven't picked up Odyssey for a couple of years, but she looked incredibly familiar to me. And I believe you also saw that somewhere on a forum or on Reddit that there was actually a character that was literally recycled from Odyssey yeah. and in Valhalla. And I understand you might need to cut some corners here and there, and I'm okay with that. But to Especially, hardcore fans, they'll know. They will notice. Again, I'm not even a hardcore fan, and I noticed that some people were just looked like they were there before. I've seen them before. And now, the biggest disappointment were the amount of bugs and glitches I came across. In comparison to Mikhail, I feel like this is how many I encountered. And I believe, did I you shocked. encounter any? I did. I, uh, there was uh, one issue where, for example, you had it as well, where a quest did not trigger. So all uh, I did yeah, was this... leave the menu, come back. Mm -hmm. I finally saw it and then there was a time when my character Eivor would uh, actually clip through the building oh, yeah. you know and then bring me back and this happened just a couple of times but then you had some really game game breaking bugs oh, I yeah. was surprised just literally booting up the game the game would not start for me it would start loading because obviously it's trying to optimize everything when it first starts off after downloading everything and nothing I could not press on anything on the main menu, let's just no break. No control whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. I press X, nothing would move. I was like, okay, it's probably my controller. Something is buggy with it. So I leave the game, close the application, boot it up again, change the controller in the meantime. 
the same thing happened. I'm like, it cannot be that both controllers are faulty. Am I, do I have to break out my third controller as well? That happened twice before the game started and it even happened one more time during um, Eivor was standing on the dock and she just freezes, yeah. stops moving. Yesterday as well, she's standing and she stops moving again and even sent it to you. I'm like, look at this. Stop moving completely. I cannot touch anything. But the fourth time, I actually could uh, switch to the Raven, Sunin, so I can kind of move Sunin around, but then when I switch back to A4, again, she would not move at all, and it was like, you saw what is going on here. Yeah. What is, what is happening? This is very, very disappointing. And just like you said, the clipping happened so many times, because obviously I chose a female A4. Her hair sometimes, like, you know, glitches through whatever she's wearing. And there was one time, yes, it was kind of hilarious. I was laughing. It was sad, but it was hilarious. Yeah. I was riding my horse. I was up going on a mountain. And at some point, it kept on going, even around areas where uh, you would not expect a horse to go. Again, it's a mountain. Yeah. It's an icy mountain. You did not expect that um, a don't... horse can climb it. Exactly. Like It's almost like it's tilted awkwardly trying to defy exactly. the laws of but physics. But here's the thing. It started falling. And I'm like, stop, do not, fall. I'm trying to get back to the normal road and it would yeah. not let me. Fell, 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 and obviously Eivor died. It was kind of comical, to be honest, to say the least. Reminds me of Witcher 3. I know, because the thing is, I've seen this so many times in lots of games that have mounts, even Red Dead Redemption, I believe people had those sort of things. But I was like, I can't believe I experienced that's why I was laughing. But it was kind of annoying and disappointing to see that this many bugs and glitches, actually, if you go to any review, Online, they do have lists of bugs and glitches, and they got to play the game way before us. Yeah. So that tells you that Ubisoft, what are you doing? We do know that Ubisoft is actually going to be releasing a big patch next week to fix everything. So we're going to see what do they fix, what do they leave out, what do they forget. And they even have on their official forum a whole list of confirmed bugs and glitches. So that's kind of sad, but this is only the beginning of our review of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're not done yet. We've got lots to say. Even some positive things, not all bad we, things. We Don't just worry. wanted to brush off the all the ugly stuff all about the ugly this game. Stuff. But we're next, we're going to talk about some of the good and some of the bad stuff. Exactly. So coming up next, our continuation of the review of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So stay tuned. Pulse 95. Metacritic critic gives it 80%. That's IG from official critics. Yes, IGN Middle East, 8 out of 10. Push Square, 8 out of 10. But what is our rating of Assassin's Creed Valhalla? You'll find out at the end of this segment because we're not done talking about it. Previously, I was talking about the various glitches and the bugs that I encountered throughout the game and the fact that the graphics did not feel that they are suitable for such a big game coming from such a big game developer. I will actually say it, I'm gonna be bold and say it, it kind of felt like it was from a PS3 game. Some of the graphics, Ouch. sometimes when I'm looking at their faces, wow. I'm like, this is not how a PS4 game, especially since, again, I'm gonna compare it to Final Fantasy VII Remake, even though like, you know, they're from different genres, it was, if I look at that game and how beautiful it was, the cutscenes and everything about it was just so well done. Ghost of Tsushima, which I had some gripe about, remember that, and we spoke about it a couple of months ago. Yeah. It still was, you know, had a beautiful experience. And Valhalla does kind of have that in terms of the music and the scenery. It's very beautiful when you're, you know, when you survey the area from the top, from the very top, or when you're riding your mount and you hear this beautiful music, when you see you're going around in the mountains, when you're in Norway, and then when you move into your settlement a bit later in the United Kingdom, and you see the differences, the colors, and all that. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's a visual spectacle, and there's mm -hmm. a, a real grit to just the look and feel of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, you play as a Viking warrior who, you know, either female or male, who joins uh, with their sibling to go on a just a multitude of Viking raids and building. Oh, I love the raids. 
It's actually it a lot of fun. As many of I as many have I done so far, I actually enjoy every time.、Mm. And I've gone to a point where I've done a siege where I'm going for like the epic raid,、um, and it is so amazing because a lot of this game is doing the raids and building up your settlement. Yeah.、Um, which compared to other Assassin's Creed, usually when you're Trying to find upgrades and doing quests, it's、yeah. sort of just going across the the open world. But the just, settlements, yeah. Let me just is, add to that in terms of Odyssey, yeah. Because I think that was brought in also in Odyssey, and I that's where I'm gonna say the the difference between Odyssey and、um, Valhalla is just like you said. I do not get bored in raids. I actually go towards them. I have a lot of fun.、Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, back in Odyssey, because like you said, maybe the previous Assassin's Creed games. You it was sort of a bit different. In at Odyssey, you actually had to go to different fortresses and take them over. Again, it depends whether you're on the Spartan side or the Athenians、yeah. at that moment. But obviously, it's which side you're a mercenary. So it depends on where which side you're on. You take over the fortress, and at some point, it got super repetitive. You go to a fortress, you kill off the captain,、yeah. you kill off the other ones, and you get tired. You need to sneak around and do this. The quests were exactly the same. I know that's going to be repetitive as well here in Valhalla, but again, there's just something that makes it more fun. Exactly, it's the settlement itself. It's a hub. It's a place, basically a hub place, for you to uh, uh, work on、uh, where where you could put merchants to make some money. Yeah.、Uh, where you can start recruiting some new Viking warriors.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what could be your next raid? And then as you start conquering, uh, uh, you know, little chunks of ninth、uh, century England, you start actually,、uh, you know, deciding what. Rulers should be in these in these areas, and it creates you know, and you'll start to realize it's a messy political game. Yeah. And you are the you're basically the big centerpiece that's shuffling all this power struggle that's constantly happening、mm-hmm. in the world map, and it's absolutely fun. I don't know how long I would keep playing it to a point where it gets monotonous, but I do like that it's super rewarding when you focus on. Trying to、uh, strategically move your your、uh, your warriors and trying、yeah. to make money because you also get upgrades for that. You get、uh, and、uh, you get all sorts of new skill points. And early on, it's important to know what approach you're going to go for. Are you going to go for a very heavy combat kind of warrior, someone who's more focused in range,、mm-hmm. or are you going to go for something that's more stealth? And for me, I've realized, you know, you can't just instant kill enemies with just going, you know, backstabbing them. I realized one time I backstab an enemy, and it's like, oh, just a bit of damage. <laughs> and, and I'm like,、yeah. oh, usually in the old games, you instantly、uh, no. die. No. So I'm like, okay, this leveling system is Not very, Odyssey, very、yeah. interesting and one that I'm、mm-hmm. still learning. Mm. As I'm playing, see that's the thing. They're being. That's what I told you. It feels like very similar to Odyssey to me. A lot of aspects have been brought in. I like the fact that it made it a bit more accessible. You do have a lot of、um, abilities to move around and change your settings, your gameplay settings, right before you play. So that's like a big hats off to Ubisoft for adding those. Even the ch- how challenging the game is. I don't believe that was ever introduced in an Assassin's Creed game before. So that is super important thing for even newcomers who are trying out the game for the first time. You don't want to throw them into something very difficult right off the bat. Some people might want to just experience the story, which is very, very interesting. Again, I'm going to compare it to Odyssey. I'm enjoying Valhalla's story a bit more. Actually, no, much more than Odyssey, because at Odyssey I was super intrigued. I was like, hmm, there's a lot of mystery, and it gripped me from the beginning. But then halfway around the Midway point, it completely lost me. I'm like, I'm tired of this. But I love also the fact or the tie-in between Odyssey and between Valhalla. There's a lot of things that I enjoyed,、yeah. and probably the narrative and whatnot is what's helping me give Valhalla this this score, which is seven out of ten. Because if it was for the glitches, if it's for the bugs, if it was for the graphics, and if it was for just the lack of、um, I'd say a full experience, and even the fact that Avor is quite slow in comparison to other Assassin Creed. Well, Assassins, actually, that was officially said in one of the reviews where they're like,、um, Avor is slow, and I was like, I've been saying that for a while now, so it's not something in my head. If it wasn't, if it was for only those things, I would have given it a much lower score. But the Gameplay and the story. Actually, the story the most is what pushes it, and the fact that the social aspect is very rewarding and very intriguing and very interesting is making me like, 
yes, I want to know more and I want to do more. I want to continue playing this game. Yes. Which is why, like, even though I'm not that much into the game because it took me a while to get into it, the, uh, the bugs and glitches slowed me down so much. It made it very hard for me to get into the game. But eventually, bit by bit, when I did get into it, I could not put my controller down, and which is why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. I am with you uh, uh, on the same score, except for the fact that with the, the, the bugs and the glitches, it does go down to, at the state it's in, it does go down to 6 out of 10. When it gets more polished and Ubisoft fixes out the bugs, it could be a 7. But also, with that, I'd like to say that the game does not merit a full price purchase. Mm. I would recommend for it to, uh, you know, for the price to drop a bit, get it, get it out, buy it when it's on a discount. Black Friday. That, that, Coming yeah. up tomorrow, mm -hmm. so maybe it'll be discounted whether it's overseas or in the UAE. Just don't buy it full full game, full game, price. I even got the deluxe edition because oh, it man. was the only one available. But then, you know, that actually happened with Odyssey as well. But, you know, you, do, you make do with what you have. And this is our score for uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Coming up next is the sports headlines and more stuff to talk about right here on the Afternoon Cutlick. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.